Hey everyone, it's Graham from GM Details. Welcome back to the channel for another video. This time I'm going to introduce you to 10 different leather cleaners on the market. Obviously it's not all the products available, but a selection from the budget, mid price and oh my god is this stuff made from unicorn tears expensive. So I've been cleaning leather since I bought my first BMW 3 series back in around 2016. I wanted to learn how to care for it so I joined a few groups on Facebook to learn about products, tips and tricks where luckily I saw that there was an introduction to leather course by the leather repair company in Hull in Yorkshire. I was very kindly invited down by Richard Hutchins, the owner of LRC UK, to this full day course. Lunch was even provided and a fantastic goodie bag was given out but I came away with far more than a few cheeky samples. Knowledge. And it's that knowledge that I'm happy to share with you all if you're interested in learning about leather as there really is a hell of a lot to learn about it. So stick around and subscribe and your leather will thank you. I'm far from a professional leather expert but I'm certainly going to try my best to give you the best advice that I can based on my own experiences. Firstly, as you all know by now, I'm not affiliated with any brand and although I attended the introductory course with one of the leading training providers in the UK for leather care and repair, it has no bearing on any of these products I'm about to show you. You'll get my impartial opinion on them all individually. So I'm going to skip over identifying leather as that's a whole other video and I'll cover that when I come to make the mega test cleaning ability video where these cleaners will be put to the test with general spills from normal use, tea, coffee, kids etc. This video I'm going to section off these two front seats, prepare them for cleaning and show you how they all perform. So to start with, if you're worrying about whether you have real or synthetic leather at this stage, don't worry. There's nothing different at this stage and I'll keep you informed throughout the video if there's any different products or techniques to use. Step 1 then, a thorough vacuum of the seat. You can use the crevice tool if you have softened the edges with some fine sandpaper. Without any pressure on the leather, pick up any loose debris first, then use your hand or elbow to press into the seat and allow any debris that's fallen down the sides of the seams to be extracted. This is really all the prep you need and I've shown this on every interior cleaning video I've done, so let's move on. You have to be mindful of the temperature before using any cleaning chemicals on any interior surface, including leather. Having a canopy or a tree for shade is excellent as what can be quite cool outside can easily be a lot hotter inside and cleaning leather on a hot day is definitely not recommended. Your leather shouldn't be any more than around 20 degrees celsius. The cooler the better though. I've opened all the doors and the temperature has reduced inside so let's crack on. Now some leather cleaners come as a pump dispenser and some as a spray. Reason for that is some brands believe you get a better clean with a dry foam rather than a liquid spray. It's more controllable and you're not soaking the leather with a liquid. So in fairness, with this test, I've bought them all their very own pump dispenser to give them all a level test. They will all deliver exactly the same amount and I'll be using the bamboo pads from the leather repair company to clean each section. So I've managed to get 10 sections of leather on one seat, so there are a few limitations there. Remember, this isn't a test of the cleaning ability of the products, although we'll see that to an extent, it's mainly an introduction to what they're like to use using different cleaning media and tools. Now they're also only marked on the bottom with what they are, so the test will be completely a random selection. First up is Leather Repair Company LRC1 Leather Cleaner. Now none of these products state that they can be used in this way. This is just what I like to do with products, to try this and that and see what works better one way or another. What I'm feeling straight away with the LRC1 is it's drying very quickly as I'm using the bamboo pad. I think the foam is being drawn into the pad and it's left nothing to be wiped away by a cloth. As one advantage with these pads, it can remove the dirt into the pad itself. 
If the area hasn't been cleaned in a long time, then obviously a second or third application would be required, with the pad being rinsed out in between. But from this pad, I don't see any residue at all, so I'm already suspicious about this dry foam being of no use here. This one is Squid Inks Leather Cleaner, quite a new product by them along with their protection cream. This has little to no scent to the cleaner, but the protection cream has a very distinctive leather aroma. Looks as though it's slightly wetter, but again the pad drawing up the foam and leaving it with no residue visible on the pad itself. Garage Therapy 1 Leather Cleaner, another relatively new product to the market in collaboration with Colourlock, another leading leather care and repair specialist. This one being made specifically to Garage Therapy's specifications. It's a completely clear liquid with no leather scent to it at all. And even though I gave it the same three sprays on a completely new applicator here, it still looks to have dried quickly while using the bamboo pad. Of course, Garage Therapy recommend you use a brush to apply it, but we're giving all of these the exact same chance. And this is the first time there's been some grime residue on the pad. OCD Finish Cow Food Leather Cleaner really good name for it. This one's a really strong scented product, very deep and musky leather scent like a horse saddle. Produces similar foam to all the rest and behaves in much the same way whilst applying, but very little residue on the pad again. An optional step after you've cleaned your leather is to take a clean damp cloth and lift away any residue of the cleaner from the seat, if there is any. Sometimes it's only really noticeable in the bucket afterwards, but it does kind of go against the whole ethos of using foam to prevent soaking in the first place. The first two from Leather Repair Company and Squid Ink had no residue left, but at the back from Garage Therapy and here again from OCD Finish, it seems that there's a soapy residue being reactivated by the damp cloth. It might not be an issue, but one that's certainly worthy of mentioning. Personally, I'd not want any cleaning chemical residue left behind, and that's why I use this damp cloth method myself, just to be sure. Here's one of the most expensive cleaners here, Tac Systems Leather Cleaner. If you've never heard of them before, they're a Korean brand, normally known for incredible paint protection products, so I'm really hoping this will be something worth talking about. So again, another cleaner without a scent. If that's what you prefer, some people are put off by artificial scents and products. This one does look to have been really effective on cleaning ability, and apologies for the bloody shot there of the pad. Autoglim's leather cleaner now, and this was so nice to use. Spread over the area very nicely, worked in very well, but I didn't notice any discoloration to the pad. And the scent wise, it's an interesting old leather scent, as I would describe it. Actually, quite suits the product, really. Anakem Automotive Solutions Leather Cleaner Rawhide Northern Ireland based brand <laughs> Sorry I just had to include that Yes Rawhide is its name and another of the leather scented products Works very well in the foamer as have most of them and it spreads evenly without drying out so quick even on this slightly larger section that I'm doing Next up is LTT Leather Care Auto Foam, designed to be used in the foamer and out of all the products that we've used this is the most chemical smelling and on application you can see it drying very quickly so you'll need to reapply more often than others using it this way. Finishing down nicely enough though but again no noticeable residue on the pad that you could see. 
just to give that final damp cloth wipe over the seat to remove any cleaner residue and the only slight foaming is from the Autoglim side. But remember, only three of these products are actually designed to be used in this way, so we can't take this as any reflection of the product's ability. I was just interested to see if they could be used in this way. The final two in this test and this one is the Carbon Collective Revive Leather Cleaner. A subtle scent and designed to be used as a foam, so I had no issues with it whatsoever here. And finally, leather cleaner from Autoglans. Same story, foamed up very well, applied and spread evenly, no scent to this one either, but neither of the two showed any dirty residue. Not surprising really, as headrests don't really get that dirty. Well, not in my car anyway. Same wipe down as all the other products have had and no residue of either of these. So let's now have a look at the seat with the tape removed and as there was lines where the tape had been I went over the seat with a damp cloth again and I didn't expect the lines to disappear. I guess there must have been some cleaner residue under the tape but as I said earlier this method wasn't a test of cleaning ability, more to see if they all could be applied via the same application method and I think it worked out okay. I'm still not convinced dry foam is the best way to clean leather though, so let's move on to the other seat where I'm going to test all of them as a liquid cleaner. Yes, even the foams. I've got a selection of horsehair brushes here from various brands which I'm going to be randomly picking up and using. To be fair, they all have a very similar brush density and feel to them, so none of them will have any particular advantages over each other. First up, in no particular order, is Autoglim Leather Cleaner. Just a couple of sprays, and there's no need to lean too heavily with the brush. It's not a scrubbing brush, just let the bristles do the work. So work that in just for a few moments and then give it a wipe over with your cloth. You could either wipe it with a damp cloth or a dry cloth entirely up to yourself. So just by working in that leather cleaner for a few moments and just look at the dirt that's removed. Superb. Next up is LTT Leather Care Auto Foam. Now should I use this at 4% PIR? <laughs> this is designed for use in a pump dispenser. So let's see how it goes. Again, a couple of sprays and immediately I'm hit with the most disgusting chemical smell. I didn't notice so much when it was foam, but maybe that's why. After working in with the brush for roughly the same amount of time and the cloth doesn't reveal much in the way of dirt removal. There's a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the Autoglim, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Next is Rawhide. from Anakem Automotive. Small section at the back for them this time. If you notice, not a lot of them are actually foaming up at the moment and there's a very good reason for that, so stick around and I'll reveal the reason shortly. Wipe away the residue again from the leather with a clean, fresh cloth. No point depositing dirt back onto the surface with a dirty cloth. And the cloths I'm using aren't dish cloths. They're soft bamboo interior cloths, perfect for leather cleaning. If you're interested in getting some, I'll put a link in the description below for you. So the Anakem Rawhide did good for its small section, cleaned well. Next up is LRC1 from the Leather Repair Company. Remember, I'm choosing all these products purely at random and the brushes are cleaned after each use and selected from a bucket of water and dried before use. This is quite a tough wee area for the brush to get into, something the bamboo pads are great for. And the wipe down for LRC1 reveals a good level of dirt removal and this product is designed to be used as a spray. OCD Finish Cow Food Leather Cleaner now. Comes in this handy 250ml bottle and comes in at around 5 to £7. Good size for the glove box, but not for a large project of say a full interior of a Range Rover. Foams up very well indeed, and on wipe down there's that soapy residue again, which takes a few goes with the cloth to completely remove and reveals a bit of grime down the middle. 
liquid ink leather cleaner now and all I have is a small sample of this that's why I've got the small trigger and these dispense less product so I'm giving it a few more sprays for fairness now as I brush the cleaner in it's not looking like a high foaming product and it is designed to be used as a spray as well I did promise you an explanation what can happen is that if the leather has a significant level of dirt on it it can impede the level of foam that the cleaner provides we'll find out a little bit later on just if that's true or not the final wipe down reveals it's cleaned very well regardless of not foaming up so well done squid ink and now tack systems leather cleaner one of the most expensive at around 20 quid for 500 milliliters it's got no scent to it either I've used it on the rear seats before and it seems to have very little user experience. Now that's okay if it's plain and you see good results, but in this case, as you can see from the cloth, there's nothing on it at all. Later on in the video, I'm going to use another cleaner on that area and see if it manages to remove anything that the tack hasn't. Carbon Collective Revive designed to be used in a pump dispenser it's around 11 pounds for 200 milliliters so very much in the expensive category here a very subtle leather scent with this one i just wonder what would be the difference in volume between one pump and one spray is if anybody knows that can you please let me know in the comments thank you very much and the cloth wipe reveals a good level of dirt removal so that's a very good result for carbon collective Autoglans Leather Cleanse, just to be a little different. It's in the mid to low price category. Um, if you can get it on a deal, shop around. County detail and supplies often have good sales on various bank holidays where you could pick up this 500 milliliter bottle for, for as little as six pounds. Normally it's around 10 pounds, which is still good for 500 milliliters. It's a spray on work in type of product. So ideal for a pad or a brush doesn't have a scent so ideal for cleaning vinyl too and on the label it also states it can be used on Alcantara which kind of tells me it's quite a gentle cleaner now here's a question for you let me know in the comments what Alcantara is I don't mind if you google it just let me know final wipe down on this unfair little corner and there is a faint grain mark but I know this is a very competent cleaner so I already know it can do a lot better but by the luck of the draw it's got this little section and last but by no means least we have our most expensive leather cleaner in this little comparison garage therapy leather cleaner at around 18 pounds for 200 milliliters of liquid it's nearly double the price of the carbon collective revive for the same amount so is it any better at cleaning let's find out it's sold in a mousse dispenser bottle so i'd imagine this will be the first time you'll have seen anyone use it as a liquid it doesn't have a scent, completely clear, and as you can see, it foams up rather well indeed. A lovely product to use in this way. Remember earlier I said the foam was a little bit too dry and the product was flashing off as I was using it? Well, not so much here. Also, it left a little bit of a soapy residue behind. Well, it's still a little bit soapy after this wipe down, and there's grime on the cloth, but if we can compare the two halves of this bolster cushion, the Autoglim was the first one on test and it looks to have removed more grime or has it just spread across the cloth differently? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Well there's the tape line marks and there's no denying some good cleaning ability has been achieved by all of the products on test or has it? There's a good matte finish to all of the sections except this one, the Carbon Collective. Or has it just left a darker finish to the surface somehow? It left a similar darkening effect on the passenger seat headrest too, so maybe that's just a characteristic of that product. But as a final test, I'm going to choose just one of these products that we've been using, and one that you've not seen much on the channel before. And it's also performed quite well on these tests, and that is Squid Ink Cleanse. So I'm now going to clean the entire base of the seat again with Squid Ink Cleanse, and see if it can remove any further grime that the previous cleaner has left behind.
so if you remember first was Autoglim leather cleaner and we have a clean cloth so well done to Autoglim for a perfect result. LTT Auto Care Auto Foam now and another clean cloth here. Same with Anakem Automotive Solutions Rawhide, an impressive result too. And the same story with LRC1 from the Leather Repair Company. Not a single mark on the OCD finish cow food either. All impressive so far. Now Squid Ink. After its impressive dirt removal on the first pass, it's actually removed a little bit more grime on its second go, including a brush hair. <laughs> so maybe not as good cleaning power as some of the others. Tack Systems leather cleaner, it looks a little bit faint in the picture, but there was a little bit more grime there as I see in my notes, but it is negligible. Carbon Collective Revive, another one picking up some more grime. I wonder now if that darkening was still some dirt that hadn't been removed first time. Interesting. Autoglans Leather Cleanse has just shone through here with a spot on performance and one of the lowest price cleaners on test here. Awesome results for Autoglans. And finally Garage Therapy Leather Cleaner, very good to see one of the cheapest next to the most expensive and have the same results. I know what some of you are thinking right now, Surfex HD would have cleaned that perfectly first time. Well I'd personally not be wanting to use a degreasing all purpose cleaner on my leather seats whether they be vinyl or pigmented leather, which just means painted or dyed. Yes, it has a coating on it, but so does your car in the form of a clear coat. But we strive endlessly to protect that at all costs. Yet, all over social media, people are scrubbing away at the leather seats with thermoplastic pads and general salt-based degreasing chemicals because they're cheaper. You'd be as well washing your car with fairy liquid. It's the exact same principle as this and you've probably already paid a premium to have leather in your car, so why not look after it properly? Which leads me onto protection. Auto leather protection is big business with nearly all car care brands having leather cleaning and protecting products. I'm not going to go into an in-depth study of what's best here as you'll be bored out your nut but I'll give you a few pointers from what I've learned and if you've got anything to add drop it in the comments section. As my leather is fairly new I've got a few choices. Quick spray protection like this new one from the leather repair company, a protection liquid or a ceramic possibly. I'm not going to get into BAMs as they're for really old vintage leather and should not be used on modern car leather as they do nothing more than attract more dirt to the surface causing premature wear in my opinion. So for now I'm going to show you this spray protection and one of the liquids from Squid Ink. So this is called Leather Juice Protection. 
Think of it as a ceramic quick detailer for leather. Same idea. This forms a molecular barrier over the leather, protecting it from UV damage, stain transfer from clothing, and also a good barrier against food and drink spills. And the best of it is it can be used across real synthetic and vinyl look leathers too, but it's only suitable for leathers under three years old, presumably as it bonds to the protective layer on top of the painted surface and not the leather itself, which is underneath the dye. It doesn't mean you no longer have to clean it again or reapply protection. Even a ceramic coating over leather can't last past a year due to the continual flexing of the coating with you and your family sitting on the seats. So what can you use on older leather? Old and new alike, you can use a protection cream like this one from Squid Ink, which will be a little thicker than the detail spray but effectively do the same job. A little bit like a wax versus a sealant. Now one of the biggest problems with this type of product is actually the product description itself, believe it or not. So many people, rightly so, argue that modern leather doesn't need conditions. And that in itself is true, but as I said earlier, there are so many types of leather for the automotive industry that it's only the true professional leather companies like the Leather Repair Company that offer a range of cleaning and protection products designed for use with the sometimes rare leather upholstery like Napa, Nubuck, Aniline or even Suede. All of which can't be protected with this type of product I'm using. You even have brands making videos telling you that you're stupid to even consider conditioning your leather as the product will never reach the hide itself. And that's all true based on the name of the product. You don't need to condition leather, it's already been done at the factory. What you do need, however, is protection. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what this product is. A barrier against UV damage, dirt and stains for a couple of months maybe. It does soften the leather a little bit like a hand cream would on your hands, but this conditioner should really be relabeled in a protective capacity rather than condition. If anything, to stop a whole lot of misunderstandings. Leave that to the leather balms. Absolutely necessary on vintage leather to keep it hydrated, but not for your pleather, vinyl or vegan seats that we have today. So back to the product itself. It says to apply with a foam applicator, which I'm doing here, and it's going on very nicely indeed. It's not sticky and it's got a lovely natural leather scent to it which stays in the car for a couple of weeks after application, possibly longer, but you'll become nose blind to it after a fortnight or so anyway. Would I recommend using it? Absolutely, yes. Anything that gives a level of protection to a very delicate layer of factory clear coat is going to be an advantage in preserving the look and feel to your leather seat for longer than those using all-purpose cleaners, citrus degreasers and those thermoplastic scrubbing pads which are only really great for plastics. But the choice is ultimately yours. Just don't believe everything you see online from somebody that's trying to sell you something. If you have a query on which product is best for your own car, let me know and I'll do my best to help you. As I said, I'm no expert, but I'm really interested and have some knowledge which I hope has been of help or even some interest. This video has taken a lot of my time to put together and coming up soon I'll be taking these 10 cleaners and more and putting them to the test with some very difficult tasks should be interesting. Until next time, take care. Thank you.